it's uh, still pretty early, but uh, I had a bit of a restless night. Um, and Jesus was talking to me this morning. Not really, no, no, just kidding. There's, there's no Jesus, but um, uh, no, I had a kind of a calming um, dream uh, last night about one o'clock. <clears throat> I got a no notification that YouTube had pulled uh, the latest video, uh, the cr Critic Court update. Um, if anybody does want to see it, I'm uploading it to the Google Drive, and I will give you the link. I think it's going to be, I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll make the link available if you want it. Just text me, 602-312-6504, and I can give it to you there. The reason why they said that they pulled it was that there's a moment in the video where I point to the address, name and address on the document, and I say, this is not me. So um, they, they pulled the video. The reason why they said they pulled the video um, was to protect that entity, that entity's identification. <laughs> and that was the trust's uh, identification. Um, we'll talk more about that if you guys are interested. Mostly, I know you guys are interested in audio stuff. This is this is just what how what, what is happening in my life right now, and um, I you know I'm very very lucky to to be able to do what I do and um, uh, to and to do it full time, and so I want to keep doing that, and I realize that. How do I say this? Um, I watched a video this morning talking about how Joe Rogan was criticizing Hollywood in general and Hollywood people, celebrities in general, that they're, they're, they're real weirdos and they often will use their issues in their personal life and also just their viewpoints to sort of navigate fame and create virtue signaling and also um, like weird reasons to pay attention to them like if, if you notice 99.9% um, .9 of all the celebrities they'll create a trust or they'll create a foundation and it never really does anything it never really solves any problems it never is never really effective the video um, I think was AI generated because it was talking a lot about Daniel Day Lewis and uh, Daniel's uh, uh, motion picture choices and his performances and his method acting and then his his choice to retire from that career and then go be a cobbler and take time and be with his family and and just sort of be a master craftsman at something and feel what it feels like to be really good at something you know that that in a way it's it's not when you're really good at something that nobody cares about, it brings great satisfaction to those that do care about it. And that's what I'm able to do uh, with loudspeakers. And I am, I am very grateful and very humble. And um, I feel very good about providing that to you guys. And, um, and I, I, I wanna keep doing it. So uh, the last 24 hours has been pretty busy as far as my brain going uh, running scenario for trial uh, simulations things like that and uh, situations things to talk about you know approaches to, to do things like that and um, I, th I think the biggest underestimate that the system has on me is that they don't really know me they don't they don't care and they have no obligation for that that that's fine I'm okay with that. They don't know what I've been through. They don't know how I've handled it. They don't know what's really going on in my mind. In fact, uh, when I was in court yesterday, um, there was a lot more people in court than normal. And uh, I think they were afraid I was gonna be uh, physically violent, uh, which again, I, 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 that's not what I want. Um, now, when you, it, sometimes, Sometimes organizations will create traps for people that they are afraid of, 
uh, or they feel threatened by. And um, you got to understand when when you take shallow, pretty much useless people, and you make them important, like aristocracy, and you give them and 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 give them a means to fulfill all of their material, you know, wishes. They become very loyal and they will fight to protect one another. And um, if you threaten that, that's, that's, that's a big problem. Now, the other issue is that um, in court, they're probably going to try to, you know, discredit me, trash me. Um, uh, and, and really, their leverage is Sherry. So, because when I was in jail, um, the only thing I really thought about was how Sherry would suffer, you know, being homeless, being not taken care of. And uh, so, by me going to jail, I don't, to me, it would be a vacation, personally. Um, but that's if I'm selfish and I'm, I do my best not to be selfish. And so um, I tend to love and I tend to love too much uh, where it becomes a vulnerability for me. And uh, I, when I was in the Air Force, um, I was having issues with the colonel um he came in while we were having uh the, it was the first one that i knew of which was the pineapple express storm came through hawaii we i was in telecom uh we were on 12 hour shifts um the colonel came in i called the room to attention i was eating out on the floor which typically you're not supposed to do you're supposed to go eat in the lunch room but i was manning the phones and i i think the colonel just didn't like me in general and again remember what i talked about about i see i I don't recognize aristocracy i don't recognize their legitimacy because they're not they're not legitimate and um people in power tend to find that threatening so anyways the the colonel made some requests uh behind my back and said some things that i thought were inappropriate i tried to use his open door policy I found out that there's not really an open door policy. So if you're in the military, um, they're lying to you. Um, and uh, typically the way people handle that situation is they, they just become jaded and hardened. And, um, you know, it's, it's just important to be a good slave, right? Just hunker down, take it. And uh, so anyways, um, I tried to use this uh, open door policy. I was denied. Um, let's see I was oh I, I tried to get a uh, an appointment with him and finally after persistence they gave me an appointment well on I think a couple of days prior to the appointment I woke up like I did this morning and I just had a calming feeling coming over me that was like don't fight this just you know let let things be uh, go back to work and just you know don't be a troublemaker and uh so i went down there and uh i canceled my appointment because uh, i didn't want to waste anybody's time well this uh further aggravated the colonel and so he the colonel staged a a play. That's what it was. It was a play. Um, he staged a play and basically had my whole uh, chain of command, with with the exception of him and the major. Uh, it was lieutenant and up. I don't think, yeah, the captain wasn't there either, but it was lieutenant and down, I should say. So everybody was in this. And what was funny is I look back and... and <laughs> they assumed that I knew all these people. There was a lot of people in the chain of command that I had never met. And so again, this was all meant to intimidate me. This was meant to shame me. This was meant to 
um, you know, put me in my place. And, um, and it didn't. All it did was um, remind me that, uh, you know, and this, is, this was in 95, 1995. So, and this haunts me to this day was listening to this lieutenant that I had, I thought I had bonded with over a, a Christmas um, project that we did on base together, which was the lighting of the water tower, which is, is, is kind of famous for, the, for, the, for Hickam, Hickam Air Force Base. Because the Japanese thought it was a church, so they didn't bomb it. And um, the, this lieutenant, uh, you know, was told to tear into me and teach me a lesson for missing my appointment. And, you know, I knew that I didn't miss my appointment. I knew that I had canceled it. He knew that I had canceled it, but yet he was tearing into me and threatening me with, you know, taking me to court, court martial, article 15. And, um, I just, I took it. And I, I protested the, the I protest I protested the best I could, which was I was smiling. I was had a I was like, this is, you know, ridiculous. This is crazy. This is like, you know, the way that I felt when the <laughs> again I think about how ridiculous it is. The, the when the security guards were roughing me up at the fucking hospital. Um <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is going on? This is crazy. But um um it's important to um, I also talked to Tony yesterday and Tony gave me some good advice and he's like you need to back off he says you need to calm down he says you need to not do, not do what I'm, I've been doing and uh, I agree and uh, I, I will do my best to uh, keep it what's the word sweet and short and um, not really talk about my personal stuff and um, just talk about audio stuff because that's what everybody seems to like um, now will this be forever probably not um, probably just until the court and all the other court stuff the other events uh, run their course um, if I, if I end up, uh, having to do time, I have, I end up having to do time and, um, uh, but again, um, sometimes it's not the right time to stand up and fight. Sometimes like yesterday when Jordan Smith said what he said in open court about the phone, not having any exculpatory evidence which I, I knew was a lie you just take it when uh, I was I was yelling at Davin in the backyard to leave and I had a shotgun in my arms and I was pointing it up in the air I was not pointing it at him and he betrayed me by saying that it was and on the phone call, it, it has me being like just super annoyed with him and saying, no, that's not true. Right? Because he, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was being a coward. So, but I took it. I let him say what he said and I didn't punish him and I didn't take things into my own hand. So, um, uh, this is, this is not defeat at all. And I encourage you guys to just be more aware. So some of the sore spots I have that are vulnerable, um, you know, they could, they could easily, um, do things to me that I don't have a say in and that are very upsetting and life-threatening. And I don't have a team. I don't have the money 
I don't have the time to even come close to a fair fight. And so I'm just going to shut my mouth for a while and um, not talk about the court cases, not do critter cruises, not, uh, not even really tell... Um, to, uh, like a, like say offensive jokes um, if, if you don't like this understand that my life is at risk and my wife's life is at risk and I only do this so that I can pass through this moment and uh, and survive um, if you um, want to acknowledge me in the comments if you want to acknowledge my work if you want to acknowledge that you you keep hope in your heart, um, you know, um, just just say jizz, J I Z Z. I always spell it with two Z's. Um, do some sort of jizz comment in the comments section to let me know that you're rooting for me and and uh, I again the. I don't take things personal as far as when I talk about inspiring things or inspiring other people. I mostly just want friends. I, I mostly just want to be the, 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 the man that I wish I had growing up. And uh, it, it's actually not that hard to do. Um, but it is... It is especially not well. It's always it's always been unpopular. It's always been unpopular to be honest and sincere and uh, um, trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Those will you know honor real honor, and and uh, I'll put a link to the video I watched about. Um, what Joe Rogan was saying about Daniel Day Lewis, or at least what this AI was making a video about it. Anyways, um, and even in Daniel Day Lewis, he I'm sure he has many many opinions and um, thoughts on things, but he it's not acceptable in society right now for him to express those things, and so he does it through his work. And he does it through the the art of storytelling. Notice the stories that he does tell. Notice the stories that he does participate in. And the weird thing is, if your art helps make people money, then somehow it's more acceptable and it's more popular. <laughs> if, you're, if your art, um, you know... If it if it hurts too many people's feelings, um, and I, it was it was great. I saw a meme yesterday that was like, um, make uh, post the meme that hurts the most feelings. It feels the best. <laughs> and I agree, there is some satisfaction in that, and it, it and it's it's fun. And I realize now that it's a a it's a macabre sense of humor to deal with the inevitability that life is going to kill you. And um, I, I still believe in doing rad stuff. And, and for me right now, this is what is rad. This is what is radical, is, is doing what's called a metanoia. It's, it, you're doing a 180 from what you've been doing. Some people call it repentance, right? Because really, if you repent, you just stop doing what you were doing before because if you're really sorry you'll follow it up with change so and I am I am really sorry I am really grateful for the life that I have even though I there I have plenty to complain about and I don't want to complain about it I just want to continue with my work and my art I want to make movies and I, I want to basically be retired and be able to pursue those things. And if 
Um, there's a small aristocracy that's mad because I called them out and I got mad that they were dishonest and cruel and unusual. I'm, I'm sorry. I did not mean to threaten your livelihood or your status because I know those things are really important to you. Um, and the, the way that those people respond, the way that insecure people like Davin, you know, um, I was thinking about him last night about all of his tattoos and his truck that rolls coal and the way that he likes to dominate other people with his motorcycle and, you know, everything. Um, uh, I actually feel bad for him. I, f I feel bad for him that he feels the need to live in this. It's really what it is, is it's a protective shell. I'm sure that he's very hurt and he's, and he's probably in a lot of pain mentally, emotionally. Uh, and he has figured out that if he lives this sort of life, this, the life of this character, which is, you know, a guy that breeds uh, pit bulls, a guy that has all these tattoos, a guy that, you know, um, is successful, that has money, right? You know, all this kind of stuff. Um, for him, that's his pursuit of happiness. And so when somebody like me comes along and doesn't recognize that, he gets disappointed. I was talking to Sherry last night about there's, there's a lot of guys that um, have been approaching me lately that I normally don't deal with. And I've been weary about turning them down. Like, how do I, fi how do I come up with a way to turn these guys down without insulting them? Because what I really want to do is insult them. What I, I, you know, like, they need a good insulting. And... Um, people just they don't know how to hear no they don't like to see no they don't they feel they take a personal they they're like they they feel rejected and um it, the, the rejection is not personal i just uh i i don't see any value in helping a um wishy-washy cheap scumbag who has plenty of money but is being super cheap and asking to squeeze my end of the tube because I have so much or because um, I'm like he'll compliment me oh you're so you're so smart you know those sorts of things and uh, uh, believe me I don't, I don't think he watches my channel so don't it's none of you guys um, uh, the, the guy is very selfish and very self-centered and um, uh, but he's got money and um, he's been able to find a mate and breed and um, in his eyes he's very successful and a lot of those guys find satisfaction when they're able to dominate a craftsman like me um, to sort of you know show that they're better than me with their money with their you know equipment choices, things like that. And I, I, and I, I just, I see right through them and that scares the shit out of them. And so, um, I'll, I'll have to work on that. I, th I think, I think I just, I think I need to be like alone a lot. So, and the more, more stuff I read about Tesla, that's where he found a lot of his joy was just being alone, uh, listening to, um, you know, being a being a, being a conduit for the light, I'll say that, um, and be, and being at one with the universe. Um, I wish I could do more. I want to do more, uh, but I think I just need to step back and take some time to uh, build up my strength and build up um, to, to 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 get through this tough time. And I thank you guys for your patience and. By all means, share the, the audio videos, the, the subwoofer stuff, you know, um, keep promoting it. Um, again, you don't have to promote me. That's not what I'm trying to do. Um, I just want you to have the insight um, that when, you know, your friend at work compliments you on your sound system, don't tell them about me. Just say, what do you need? I got the hookups. And then all you have to do is be cheaper than the local shop. 
and then you can make some money and you can help them and you can help me and we can all enjoy music which is which is why I started this thing in the first place is how powerful that is and how um, again it can bring you one with the universe it can help dull pain it can help relieve stress um, there's so many beneficial things to just having alone time and some loud music and I, I understand that so but this video has gone on long enough and um, again uh, I'll, I'll put a link if Google lets me see that and that's the thing is I don't Google you know Google is a giant corporation and they don't always um, tell you the truth so if you want to watch somebody that has been messed with watch cancel this clothing company cancel this conspiracy same guy the stuff that he talks about is amazing and his organizational skills are fantastic and once you get on his website um, it will provide you with hours and hours of again interesting entertainment okay interesting entertainment um, you cannot give legitimacy to conspiracies you cannot give legitimacy to um, sovereign citizens <laughs> um, because um, the, the people that are the aristocracy find this uh, threatening so even even for me in my situation the only way that I found relief from the city and from the state was to to start a church because if if the city or the state attacks a church other churches will come to my aid because you, you, the state is never allowed to do that in this country anyway um, at least from the outside at least from a, a public perspective you know they want to do some secret ops and shit like that and plant some crack or some child porn on you then you know they're going to do that but um, again you cannot you cannot stop these people they have an unlimited account of money they have unlimited resources uh, the best thing you can do is enrich your mind enrich your mind and when the time is right and the time is obvious the, the, the fruit will be harvested does that make sense I love you guys I sincerely love you and I appreciate you um, I'm so proud of lots of you guys and seeing your progress going from feeble consumer <laughs> to you know um, on, s s scrappy entrepreneur right because again the, even as an entrepreneur the only reason why I chose that path was because I didn't see any other options that's why that's why I started building boxes when I was 15 nobody was offering a, a reasonable value on subwoofer enclosures and uh, I, I would have loved to build um, skateboard ramps and skateboard props but skateboarders don't have any money <laughs> so that was you know I, I I embellished my own stuff I was able to you know build some like a little skate park for for me and my friends that was kind of cool uh, even some of my enemies took advantage of the skate park while I wasn't there but um, uh, again it, it don't let the system grind you down don't let you know and sometimes you got to stand there with a frowny face in front of a s stupid lieutenant that is like six months older than you and listen to him treat you like you're a child when there's a room full of adults all watching this silliness happen in a government facility and know that this is the government in action <laughs> and then you know uh, 30 years later you realize how incompetent they all were and that this is terrible problem solving and um, but that's that's the system and the restraints that those people are in when you and when you're in the, an organization like that whether it's corporate or, or military or whatever it is um, it, it, you know if you don't like it you can leave for the most part so try not to let yourself be vulnerable 
right? Where they take advantage of you or, you, you know, they give you an offer you can't refuse. You're like, oh, that's a $15,000 bonus. $15,000 is not a lot of money. It's, it's especially not worth your life. But again, that's my opinion. But um, uh, again, I'll talk to you guys later. Um, mostly it'll be through subwoofer videos uh, and private texts. But uh, thank you for your support.